And, and so I opened that in 82 or whatever it was, and I became a, a member of the, um, ter the very first Tarragon Playwrights Unit that uh, Urjo was running when he first came in. So it was uh, Adam McGoyan and Robin Fulford and Steve Petch and mm. John Krishank. There were no women. Right. There were no women. Right. And we were all white. Right. Men. Yeah. When I think about it now, and I think I was the only gay one. I think it was the only game one, but it was very interesting. I mean, they actually gave you money in those days yeah. for doing that kind of thing. So that all kind of led up to this production of Wolf Boy that John Palmer was directing, that Shirley Douglas was in, mm -hmm. Dear Shirley, you know, Kiefer's mother and, and yeah. Tommy's daughter and everything. And it was like having royalty in my, in my play. And it was a huge bomb. Keanu was not very good in it. Keanu mm -hmm. Reeves played the Wolf Boy and yeah. Carl Marat played the other guy. Carl was quite good. Mm -hmm. The direction was kind of out to lunch. It was on this giant two-story set where you couldn't even see the top floor in that, that new Passmerai space, which they had just, uh, just, built. just built, just renovated. And I always said about that space, why the hell are you taking this building? Like, even if you take the floor out, it's stupid because the <laughs> audience is never together mm -hmm. at any time. And when Wolf Boy bombed, it was really hard. Like, the reviews were really, um, really cruel. They were, Let's back up a second then yeah. on Wolf Boy. Like, uh, uh, first, uh, give us a, 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 a sort of um, a details of the story. Tell us the story. Wolf Boy is about a street hustler kid who may or may not be crazy, who attacked a jogger in a park and bit him, and because of that was put into a mental home, and while he's there, he meets a young uh, jock boy from a very upper middle class family who's tried to kill himself, and no one can figure out why. And it's about the relationship that develops between the two of them and how this hustler convinces the other kid that he actually does have the powers of a wolf mm. and that if he joins him, they will both have this freedom, which leads to great tragedy and I think someone eating someone at the end. That just sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, tell me about the process. So, uh, uh, casting. Talk, talk to me about the casting process. How did that happen? Um, it was, you know, they put out, John Palmer directed it, and they put out mm -hmm. um, the usual sort of uh, uh, notices and things for, you know, we did, um, we did a round of uh, general auditions, and Clark mm -hmm. Rogers was the artistic director at that time, and I sat mm -hmm. through him, uh, with him through those auditions uh, for the whole period, and we were looking for people there, and we put the word out, and when John was reading, like, it was really a who's who of who became who in Toronto. I mean, Scott Thompson read for it, and wow. Kiefer Sutherland read for it, wow. and everybody who was a young Matt Craven, and all these people who've gone into other things, Kim Coates, who uh, actually did the show in Edmonton. Uh, they all read for it. It was very much, a, 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 wow, all these young guys who went on to become someone else, and Keanu got it, and, and mm -hmm. Carl got the part. But it was a very long, involved process, and every young actor in the city mm -hmm. was desperately trying to get into what that What were they show. like during rehearsal, Keanu and uh, Carl? Were, were they uh, good to work with as a writer? Were they okay? Were they? I, I wasn't there, to oh, be honest no. with you. No, oh. I mean, the play had had three productions. Uh, okay, so what was course. I going to do? Like, uh, right. my, my thing has always been, after the first production, unless I'm directing it, mm -hmm. Yeah. The play has to stand on its own. It's not my job to be there to babysit and micromanage. If the, if the director is terrible, as they often are, mm -hmm. that's something I'm going to have to live with. If the actors don't work, as they sometimes don't, that's mm -hmm. something I'm going to have to live with. But I, that, that um, trying to control something that you're finished mm -hmm. doesn't appeal to me at all. So I wasn't really there. And it wasn't until uh, tech that I came in and I saw what they were doing and I was like, oh my God, oh my <laughs> God, this is terrible. What did you think was terrible? What, uh, what did they not interpret correctly about, uh, about the script? Everyone, and this, is, this is dogs me through my career, everyone mm -hmm. got away with their first choice. Right. Every actor got away with their first choice. And your mm -hmm. first choice is never, or very rarely ever, your best choice. It's your easiest choice. It's a choice you're most comfortable making. Yeah. And the director never called them on that. I mean, when I work as a director, I'm very much about, okay, that's a lovely choice, now let's try something else. Mm -hmm. That's a good one too, but now let's try something else. Until we find that one, or even those, those um, it can be a whole series of reactions that you can play different ways every night that can still work. And, and what I felt was going on was that people were not, were not committed to actually living in the play, and this mm -hmm. is still something that I deal with all the time when I'm watching theater or when I'm creating theater, is to how to make those people actually commit to what is on the page and live within the play. And they, they didn't have that. They didn't have that confidence in themselves, in the director, or in the material. I mean, this was my first play. It's not, excuse me, it's not the most genius play ever written. It's got a lot of good things going for it, but it has some real problems as well. Of course, I wasn't willing to face that at that time. 
but I had to. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, that was, that was the experience of, of that. And it was my first break into the big time in Toronto, and I was thoroughly beat down for it and got the hell out of Toronto. And now, what did you do next? I went, to Ed I went back home to Edmonton mm -hmm. and uh, got a job as a waiter in a good restaurant and mm -hmm. uh, got an apartment and moved in with an ex-girlfriend of mine and we were living together and I sort of had sworn off the theater. I mean, I still was like I had a show called Chainsaw Love that I'd been developing at uh, Tarragon that we did a, a early fringe production of. I think it was the second fringe in Edmonton we did a production of. It's about a family of cannibals who have a... Uh, a young vampire come to stay and they, they want to seduce him and to turn them all into vampires because the world is ending because of a zombie apocalypse. Mm. And so the only way they can live is by being vampires, but he doesn't want to make them vampires. So it's full of cannibalism and weird sex and, and this old guy molesting this young kid and all this bizarre stuff. And the first act ended with literally Kate Newby, who plays the brain damaged daughter, having a meat hook put into her back from a giant muscle guy dressed in leather with a mask on, who drags her off stage screaming, she's screaming, it's too big, take it out, it's too big, while blood squirts everywhere. <laughs> and it was, you know, I mean, it was, it was a, a hit, uh, if you can say <laughs> that, about the fringe at that time. I mean, unfortunately, mm. it was a two-act play, and as I, uh, you know, it took me a long time to learn that you have to have a second act, or a mm. third act in the case of Wolf Boy, which eventually became a two-act play and, and had a lot cut out of it. Mm. But that, that um, struggle to find the second part of a play, to where, what happens after the first act and how does it end, which was a struggle that I think I went through certainly in, in my 20s, and a lot of young actors, uh, young writers that I work with still have that problem of knowing mm. how, when and how to end a play it can be very mm. problematic, and I was still struggling with that, and Chainsaw Love, really exemplified that. It had an amazing first act and then the most boring second act on the planet, right?